Hi folks, this is Praveen Kumar from Global Customer Support Informatica. Today we are about to see how we can enable JDBC SPY log for the domain DB. The presentation in here is applicable for all 9x versions of Informatica Power Center. In this presentation, we'll go through the following agenda. Um, we'll go to the introduction to the JDBC SPY logging. We'll understand what is the need for the JDBC SPY logging. And we'll go through a demo uh, which we'll be doing on 951 Informatica installation on how to enable JDBC SPY logging. And we'll see some additional considerations and the caveats of having a JDBC SPY log enabled. Okay, so, so what is JDBC SPY logging? Okay, so JDBC is Java Database Connectivity, um, which is a, uh, a connectivity provided by the Java API. And these JDBC drivers um, provide a feature called JDBC SPY logging. So when you are connecting to database via JDBC, uh, you can actually trace the queries, the prepared query statements, which you are actually passing out to the connections. So it allows the tracing of all the JDBC calls. It provides optional feature to log with timing information. The SQL timing information can be generated to help identify how long each SQL statement has taken to run. And another important feature would be the connection number information, which is actually helpful in understanding which thread and which connection is being used for executing a particular SQL query. If there are multiple threads, if you are using a connection pool and there are 10 threads running 10 different queries, you can easily figure out each thread took how much time to execute a particular query by looking at the connection number information. So what is the need for JDBC SPY logging for the domain DB? So as you would be aware that Informatica connects to the domain database using JDBC drivers. Now, if you want to track any calls, maybe for a performance issue, maybe for domain going down issue, there are different scenarios where you may need SPY logging. Here I am giving a simple use case wherein um, we are aware that by default, Informatica pushes the heartbeat of the master gateway to the domain DB every 8 seconds. And this updation of this query about the heartbeat to the domain database has to complete within 18 to 4, that is 32 seconds. If the query does not execute within 32 seconds, then the master gateway thinks it is not able to connect to the domain database and gives up its master role and thus bringing uh, the domain down or need for a failover to the other gateway nodes. You will see the error cannot update the data for master gateway node within refresh interval time 32 seconds as the error message in the catena uh, or in the node log. Okay, so, so where is the issue here? Is the issue that Informatica Java process has not triggered the query in time? Or is it that the network or the DB which has taken time to return back the results back to Informatica Java process. Now, a spy log can help you isolate where is the issue. Is it Informatica which is not sending the query or is it the Oracle or whatever the database and the network connectivity due to which there was a time, excessive time in getting the response of the execution results of the query. So how do you enable JDBC SPY logging? So JDBC SPY logging for Oracle can be done for any other database as well. You always have to use the infasetup.sh update gateway node command and you have to specify the SPY attributes in the connection string. Rest all things remain the same. Um, the SPY attributes here you can see is you specify uh, within a parenthesis the log uh, where you specify the file, you can also specify the location of the spy log if you want to customize the location. Then there is something called as line limit, number of characters it would report in a single line. 
any anything else will be truncated okay and there's something called as log t name it is very useful if you want to see which thread is executing which query so log t name is nothing but log thread name and timestamp equal to s is uh, gives you the timing information okay and similarly you can see for the db2 as well um, the same uh, rule follows um, as we use data direct drivers um, you can see that it is jdbc colon informatica colon db2 and in jdbc colon informatica colon oracle okay So coming to the demo part of it, um, to summarize um, or to give you an overview of what all steps we have to do is we have to bring down the domain and we need to take the backup of the node mirror.xml which is present in the infra home slash isp slash config folder and you need to run the update get your node as we saw in the previous um, slide and we need to start up the service after the update get your node command success execution is over and once the information which you wanted to trace in the spy log is captured you don't need the spy log anymore um, in that case or if the domain goes down and you have captured the cra crash scenario which you wanted to um, capture using the spy log once you are done with collecting the information you can again run the update gator node without the spy attributes and then bring up the services and you need to send the spy log to informatica support for analysis Okay, so let's have a look at the demo part of it. So currently I am on a Linux machine and uh, I am in the infra home directory. So let me go to the Tomcat uh, bin and make sure that my Informatica services is not running at this moment. Okay, so looks like my node is not running right now. So let me go to the infra home ISP bin folder and run the update get node command. I have already taken the node mirror.xml backup. So let's run the infra setup update get node command uh, and update the domain metadata on the normal xml file okay we think this command so uh, this is my update gate node command uh, i have added up uh, this is my jdbc url uh, bluebird is my server name 1521 is the port number, ORCL is the service name, and spy attributes I can see I'm giving the default name as spy.log, line limit is equal to 220, and I want the thread names to be specified, and I also want the timestamp to be specified. And here is my username and password for the database, um, and I press enter to execute the command now. Okay, so looks like the command has executed successfully. Uh, now let's bring up the services and uh, see if the spy log gets generated. So I'm now in the Tomcat bin directory and I'll just give infraservice.sh startup to bring up the services. Okay, so the service is starting it up now. Uh, by default, the spy.log gets created in the tomcat bin if you do not specify any path and just give a file name over there. Okay, let's see um, if the file has got created in the tomcat bin folder. Okay, so as you can see um, the file has got created and it has immediately started writing a lot of data over here okay so let's get back to this presentation for the next slides okay so this is what we did in the previous uh, demo part okay now let's 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 move back next
So what are the considerations you need to make when you are enabling JDBC spy log? So the first thing is uh, your known meta.xml can get corrupted if your JDBC URL or something goes wrong with it. So make sure that you take a proper backup of the known meta.xml in order to ensure that uh, you can uh, always roll back to your existing state. Another thing is, as you have already observed, that JDBC spy logging lights a lot of data to the disk and uh, you may end up with a disk space issue. So you have to make sure that you enable it for a short duration as, as much as possible. And there is a little overhead of writing spy log entries to the file. In case you are going for a long term um, file, JVC spy logging, then in that case uh, your DB access will take more time. Apart from that, your writing to the disk is actually going to add up extra for every query. Um, you are actually writing a entry into a file and that can actually cause a overhead to you. Then it is not recommended to keep it enabled all the time. Um, it has to be used only for debugging purposes and it is useful in resolving consistently occurring issues. So that is uh, if you have an issue which is occurring um, once in a while like say in once in a month we don't have a pattern in that case. So it is hard to maintain your spy logging for those many days. Uh, if you have enough disk space and you can take up the overhead of you because the issue is critical, then of course you can go with it. But um, otherwise it is not recommended to have it. So the next part is the references. You can refer these KB articles which have been given here, um, which discusses some how to enable in command line and also it uh, discusses about what are the common errors which you make when you are enabling JDBC spy log. And of course we would love to hear from you on support videos at informatica.com. You can tweet us with info support and also you can uh, check our YouTube channel um, youtube.com slash user info support for other videos. Thank you.